And that's just one of it, the 1619 project. It's lies. And the lies are being taught in schools. Feminism. I highly encourage you to take a look at my video, The Birth of Feminism, and I start in Roman times, and we go up to 1848. Uh, the primary claim of feminism at the Declaration of Sentiments in the Seneca Falls Convention of 1848, their primary purpose there was to establish permanently the idea that women were oppressed on all sides by men throughout history. They were not even concerned about the vote. Most people are under this impression that the big feminist movement started up because women didn't have the vote and men had the vote. Look, men didn't have the vote either. Men generally in the world got the vote maybe a decade or less before women did, and only because they died by the millions in, in the wars. And the, and the governments that be uh, that of the time felt that they could not justify not giving men the vote who had gone off and died to protect the very country they couldn't have a say in. Women got the vote for free. And today in the US, you guys probably know this, men still do not have universal suffrage universal franchise. You have to sign up for selective service to be allowed to vote. Women do not. Only women in the U.S. have the universal right to vote. Okay, men do not. But uh, up to uh, 1848, the, the only reason the, the right to vote was put in there is because um, a guy named Frederick Douglass objected. It was a black man. And get this, Okay, I, may, I hope I'm not taking up too much time here because they get me in a passion here. 1840, there was an anti uh, abolition convention. And Elizabeth Stanton, newly married, went to that convention but was not allowed to sit in the, in the prestige seating. This pissed her off. The, she was not allowed to sit in, a, in a, uh, the prestige seating at an abolition con uh, conference that she had a passion about abolitionist, okay? That was why she created the 1848 convention, not because she wanted the vote. She was pissed off that she was insulted at the 1840, 1840 uh, abolition movement. So she created her own conference where she could be front and center. Okay? Wrath and get this. Scorned. It gets worse. Uh, the whole movement, people with, uh, with suffrage and women's rights and black rights, they, uh, they were all part of the same group. They, they communicated with each other. So it was a black man who got the right to vote put in the Declaration of Sentiments as a concern. The white women were not concerned with the right to vote. And the reason is women have always influenced government through their brothers and fathers. It's called the petticoat parliament. You're probably familiar with the term. So women always felt that they didn't need the vote because they ran the men, okay? Imagine a guy, he's a lead politician, he might be president. He goes into parliament or he goes into the White House. He does something in law, in public, that his wife doesn't like. Now he goes home and every day he goes into bed and his wife pesters him, he didn't like what he did. What is he going to do in office? Is he gonna continue pissing off his wife? No, and all his wife's friends and all their social gatherings and all the women beating him up and harassing his friends? No, that's the petticoat parliament. Women were not concerned about the right to vote because they already influenced government before they had the right to vote. But they refused. <laughs> I'm going to stop there because there's, <laughs> there's a lot more to this. Yeah, you're a gentleman. But I was going to have to stop you because we're <laughs> literally about three minutes. Elliot, let's, let's go around the horn on the panel with you guys. Uh, last 30 seconds thought, what would, you, what would you leave the audience with? And we'll, we'll continue in order along the panel. That, you know, we're having all these conversations about feminism. It really has been a big part of the, the, the conversation this week. And I don't want anybody to take our position, our stance, or even just the information that's exposing what's going on as a complaint. This is not, we're not coming from a position of weakness here. It's a position of we need to see. This needs to be exposed. We need to see it for what it really is because there is a tendency for people who are not uh, schooled or aware of the things that we're talking about to say, well, What's the big deal? Why are you whining? Why don't you just do something about it in your life? Well, the whole idea is that we've been brainwashed. 
We're dead asleep. Our eyes are closed. People just don't know. And so this is a position of strength. This is a position of wake up. This is the position of we've got to do something about this. Otherwise, we're all going to suffer. Feminism is not good for women at all. It's about hatred towards the family and women suffer when their children suffer because the family is a sacred unit. And so ultimately this is for everyone to have a better future and for our families to have a better future. Jack, you're up. Yep. Um, I'll just bank off of that and say it, one of the things that I've noticed is that uh, we, it, fe, feminism always talks about making, uh, you know, women have, uh, adding value to them. And men used to look at a woman and say, I want a wife who's going to help me make a family. And the funny thing is that women have devalued themselves and now they're just sex objects. If they're not, if they're not searching out a partner for them, they're just making them pure sex objects. So that's something that you rarely hear, is that you've made yourself objectified because you, you had a role before. And, uh, you know, but it, like Elliot said, it, this is about making men better. It's just important to understand the problems that come with feminism because they're all woven into the culture. And so, but the, the real focus, I think, of this conference is, always has been uh, to make men stronger, to make them better at everything aspect of life. Welcome back to the 21 Convention Second Patriarch Edition live in Orlando, Florida. Welcome to the 22 Convention. Welcome back to the 21 Convention 2020 of Orlando, Florida, being held for the first time ever at our very first and inaugural 21 Summit event. Welcome to 21 Summit in Orlando, Florida. Well, here we go. We risked again with the 22 convention, the Patriarch and 21 convention, all three stages together in one event. Not only did we sit down and say we're going to come together and meet in mass, but we're going to take it a step further. We are going to dare have a conversation about the sexes openly, honestly, and engage the woman that could been. Like, I am amazed at how well this went. We did a brand new event, we did the second patriarch, and we did the main event for the 19th time. It's so much more than sitting in an audience watching a man on a stage. The conversations in the hallways, the connections that people make, the challenging, the collaborations. And that's what we need. It all starts with men. And it's not just men. That's what I like about this. You know, we don't want to like overreact uh, to feminism and then, and then hate women. That's not it. This is about men getting their act together, doing what they're made to do. You had meals. You had to run security. You had to run travel plans. You had to ensure people were where they needed to be. Three stages, cameras everywhere, and it was pulled off with, with flawless execution. It's evolved so much. Um, I really appreciate how Anthony has allowed you speakers to evolve and to grow and to share that and to encourage that with all the other men here. Um, to hear so much talk on family and fatherhood, there's more depth, there's more room for who they could be. Is the word patriarchy or patriarch offensive to you in any way? Not to me personally. Okay. Not at all. It's something that I, I cherish it. I love it. I grew up You cherish it. the patriarchy. I do. In mansplaining news, a three-day conference for women, led by men, hopes to make women great again. Well, women need to be taught how to be great again. Oh, Not my yes, words. we do. Like how to land a husband, <gasps> how to lose weight, how to pop out a bunch of kids. Why do men think they need to fix the problems of women? Well, it says the world's ultimate event for women. Yeah, Orlando, Florida, that's going to be the scene of the crime. It's mansplaining palooza. You say no to the toxic bullying feminist dogma. <laughs> Patriarchy is the future. It's good to see it in person. I'm just, until I got here and saw it, and you can see the people in the audience, you see the men that are here committed to listening. I mean, it's just changed my idea of what the conference is. The professionalism, the staff, the way everything is organized. It's 
given me a different perspective about this particular idea, and I'm ready to put some more fire into it. Welcome to Dream World, ladies and gentlemen. 